All right, you look good, but do I? Yeah, I look, I look fat and sassy. You look like you have the same clothes on as yesterday, and I don't. That's the point. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we got to do the intro, so I'm dressing the same way. <laughs> if I knew that, I would have worn the same clothes yesterday. No. Um, how are you? Good, how are you? We're doing okay. We're yeah. doing okay? Yeah, we I'm are. I'm doing okay? You're We're doing, doing okay? We're doing great. Um, so, th- uh, this week we're talking, um, with an incredible woman, mother, um, human being named, uh, Marianne Oliveri, who, uh, lost her daughter, Sarah, about a year and a half ago to opioids. Um, and we were fortunate enough to get involved with her through, uh, the president of Lackawanna College, Mark Volk. He reached out to me to reach reach out to Marianne for this project that she wanted to do in honor of her daughter. Um, and it kind of grew from there. Mm-hmm. So it Huge. went, yeah, it <laughs> went beyond, um, the thing you have to understand about Marianne is she's incredibly humble and she's very, um, she doesn't want a spotlight for herself or anything. You know, she just wants to bring awareness to this, this problem that, you know, you have experience with, um, I have experience with peripherally. Um, so yeah, we met and then, and then you met her and mm-hmm. then we were like, Oh, she's one of us. Yes. Um, I love her. She's amazing. And then in the midst of that, um, we got introduced to Jacqueline miles <laughs> yes. who, uh, was a choreographer for this whole thing. And I've, I don't know, maybe you can agree or, or, or disagree with me. Like I've always wanted to shoot some sort of musical yeah. based thing no, I, that was choreographed yeah i mean and something that wasn't like corny because some like there's so many that are it's so, not a flash mob no yeah and everybody thinks of this kind of dance too like they think of abby lee miller and like those kinds of like tv shows because that's kind of what's you know brought it to the forefront but it was just something more spectacular than all of the expectations i had so just to we don't so there's a an event on uh coming up that we talk about um that everyone's invited to it's free it's free Mm -hmm. light fair yes and refreshments um (laughs) at Lackawanna College and um so what we basically did was we did we did something in honor of um people that we knew um or people that we knew who knew people Mm -hmm. um this is for them. And, and it's, and it's, uh, I hate to sound like a cheesy person, but it's, <laughs> it's, vis- it's visual poetry. Yes. So is. there's a, there's a, there's a lot to take from it. There's nothing that's spoon fed to ever anyone. No. And that's it. The best part, because I hate that kind of stuff. Like as soon as I start to see it, I turn things off. So this was everything that I love. <laughs> it was, it was art. Yes, it was. So we got to make some art and it was, and it's beautiful. And, and I'm not saying that because of me, but, um, it's beautiful because everybody involved and everybody who worked on it from, you know, Mike Bellardi to, uh, Dave, to all the parents, to the, the dance school, to the dancers, to Lackawanna college. None of this, none of this would have happened. I mean, it's not one of those things like, like this is such a huge problem in, I know. in America that everybody came to, everybody was like, whatever you need. That's true. And it just blows my mind because people made it through the sixties and seventies and there wasn't an issue. And it's like, now there's an issue with drugs and I know it's right. different drugs, but it just blows my mind because everybody talks about like the sixties and seventies and it's the psychedelic. Like the drug decade. Yeah. yeah. And it's like. It never, it, as far as I know, wasn't such a huge pandemic like it is now. Yeah, and and and, and we talk about why, but I'm, I, the important thing that I think that we talk about is that we get to hear from the perspective of a parent, mm-hmm. um, and that's usually not what you hear, um, especially you know a parent who is very private. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants their baggage put out and everybody kind of shuns it at the same time, too. Like, I mean, it's some people think of it. It's embarrassing. Or if you have somebody like a child that struggles, like, who do you talk to? I mean, if you have friends that don't 
know what's going on or have exp- you know you've lost yeah, and somebody. And the, and, or- the, and, the, and, the, and the weird thing about it is, is, is there's a lot of families and people learning as they go on this. Yes, and it's good that we're doing things like this, yeah. and especially Marianne because you just nobody knows where to go, even you know. I and mean, we're trying to help. Yes. Um, and we're trying to we're, we're all trying to figure out, too. So we're, we're not the people who have the answers. Um, I think I think the one thing that we can agree on is that, you know, we did the podcast yesterday and then we had a conversation afterwards. And, I'm, uh, and, and you know, maybe I don't know if I'm shitting on this this phrase or not, but there's that phrase out there. Stop the whispers. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it should be stop the whispers. I think it should be screaming from the rooftops. I agree. And, I, and they agree, too. Yeah. So th- that's what in essence, what this is. It, is about is 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 remembrance honor a conversation mm-hmm. and being proactive about not losing people i and, mean we, that we just yeah. lost there was just three people lost in lackawanna county just yesterday yeah there's, I, a, there's this bad batch of fentanyl going around i saw um on sunday yesterday um in the newspaper that somebody posted in in their obituary i think the girl was 24 years old from down in luzerne county i mean it's like every day you're seeing and i mean it's a good thing that people are putting that kind of stuff in the obituaries to bring awareness to stuff but we just we need to do more yes because we want these people to live and to get on the other side yeah and part of our part of our conversation was was how you get there Mm-hmm. And for some, and it's different for a lot of people, and it's the same for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But how do you get to that point? And you know, Marianne was very insightful um, as a parent to explaining it to somebody who's not a parent like me. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, and you were very open and honest about what you went through. I mean, but you're you're on the other side, so you can kind of giggle about it a little bit now. But it's not. But it's it, still, it, it doesn't mean it's not a serious her, subject. Yeah, and to see her side as a as a mother too, because I'm a mother now, and I don't know what's going to happen to my kids in the future. But I have more appreciation even for my parents for going through all the stuff that they did for me, and to see like it hurts my heart that she had to lose her daughter. But you know, working through all of this, especially coming out on the other side, and then working with somebody like her in this situation, it's just it's like it makes my struggle worth it too you know that was really nice thanks it's the most you've talked ever (laughs) (laughs) well you always take all the show so because i'm an egomania (laughs) that's okay Um, i let you have it (laughs) but you know I, i i want people to tune in and listen the one thing um i can tell you is that is that the conversation is honest it's true it's sincere and um being that i I, I am still not a perfect human being. Um, uh, none of us are. <laughs> the GoPro cut off um, That's okay. about three quarters of the way through the interview. But the important thing is that we got Marianne and Jackie on camera. And you. Yes. And well. so w- if you're watching this, you're going to notice there's no second camera. If you're listening to it, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. And we hope you, uh, we hope you share it. We hope you spread the word. We hope you come out to the event. Um, Sunday, October 7th at, at 2 PM mm-hmm. at Lackawanna college yes. at the theater at Lackawanna college. Um, please come if you have family, if you have friends, if you have questions, if, 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 if you just want to be a part of something, um, we highly encourage it because it is proactive. And as of last year's CDC statistics, we lost 72,000 people to this. And I, 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 I don't know what to say after that because the numbers are so baffling. Um, mm-hmm. So we just need to do better and we need to take part in the process. And even if you don't have addiction issues somebody I promise you somebody you know does oh I yeah I promise you somebody that you love and care about does mm-hmm. and either you know about it or you might not know about it and it's about making sure that these bright beautiful people um we we, we that there's somebody someone to us yes and that we have their back mm-hmm. all right should we get into it let's get into the intro <laughs> Um, okay, so here we are, and we are, we actually have an audience over here. Who's, who's here? Who's here with you guys? That would be my husband, Dave. Dave. 
My Aunt Flo and my Uncle Jeff. Hi, Aunt Flo. Hi, Uncle Jeff. Hi. Hi. Is this your first podcast? Listening or viewing? <sighs> the, the allure is ruined for you forever. <laughs> Anytime uh, you listen and or hear one, you're going to be like, oh, there's probably like a drum kit there. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty terrible. Um, so we met. How did we meet? We met through a mutual friend, um, my boss, Mark Volk. Um, I had. That was Facebook, wasn't it? Wasn't it didn't you Facebook, Facebook me? He Facebooked, he Facebooked me. He Facebooked you. Yes. He was like, the, hey, what's up? And I'm like, college work? <laughs> <laughs> I did the old fashioned way. I emailed. <laughs> did you email me? Is that what happened? I emailed you, yeah. Wow. I know. Oh, wow. It seems like years ago. I know, and then we just immediately, and then, and then like eventually, and now it's just like we're here. Yeah. That, that we've <laughs> no. grown from like now a... Now I don't see you for 24 hours. I'm like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? I need some, I need a crazy person in my life to know where I stand. Um, so, but when you, when you reached out to, like, what was the reason for you to reach out to anybody? I had, um, unfortunately, probably a year and a half ago, May 29th, 2017, to be exact, my daughter had died from an accidental overdose. And um, we had, my husband and I and several family members struggled for years, and I always had promised my daughter that no matter what had ever happened, no matter where this road had taken us, that I and my husband would be her voice. Um, she never wanted to be an addict. It wasn't the road that she wanted. It it just happened. It's the path that she ended up going down. It was the squiggly road. Um, she made a choice one day, and that was not the choice that um, she thought she would ever become an addict. Um, so back in December of 2017, her very good friend, Kelsey Hall, had asked if she could do a dance tribute for Sarah um, at one of her recitals. And I was honored. I was touched. Um, I thought, what a great way to remember Sarah, um, especially since Sarah was a dancer, um, and even though Kelsey and Sarah didn't dance together, they cheered together. So they had quite the special bond. And um, as she performed her dance, um, and I probably, I to this day, can't remember what song. I knew it was a Keith Urban song, <laughs> one of those country songs, you know. Well, I mean, I recently took his posters down because I felt it was time. But <laughs> <laughs> And um, I sat there and I thought, why? can't we do this on a larger scale there's so many um kids dying children right dying um even adults women um brothers sisters aunts uncles mothers fathers out there that are being affected by this and i wanted to do this on a larger scale i wanted people to realize that each one of these as you may say addicts um whatever you know, the proper terminology is anymore. Um, they are a person. They they deserve to be recognized. And, you know, they, they died young, and I, at least I can attest for Sarah, um, they don't think they're going to die. Well, I mean, that's that's part of the reason why I'm like, we should, well, number one, why I was like, chom like chomping at the opportunity to do it. Remember, like, all this crap happened where we're like, oh, we got to push back, we got to push back, got to yeah. push back. <laughs> but we had... Um, Josh on a couple months ago mm -hmm. and you know to hear the point of view of an addict is was eye-opening for me but to hear like so I kind of like maybe the avenue would be like what's what's what, what's the point of view as a parent um like what do you what did, like what what changed what did you because I mean it was like you know it's not like you you guys grew up on the streets and like, you know in Detroit no absolutely you know? not we um and honestly, I, I can't even tell you exactly what changed. Um, she was she was your everyday kid. You you met her. You you would never guess that she had a problem. That there was underlying issues that she was dealing with on a daily basis. I didn't even know. 
as a I mean, mom. I mean, but she was doing all this. She was doing all this stuff in high school. I mean, even like I know the commitment that cheerleading is. Not that I was in it because <laughs> I'm about as dexterous as a, a <laughs> well. I can vouch for it. It yeah. is as the captain of the football she, and basketball. So I mean, that, so like, so people go like, well, you know, like there's a lot of surprise like when stuff happens because you're like, where do you, what, how do you find the time to even misbehave? You know what I mean? Or like, quote unquote. I, she wasn't a cheerleader in high school. She was a midget football cheerleader. And that's where she, I shined. That's that's the midgets. I was great. <laughs> <laughs> once, once everyone hit puberty, I'm like, oh, I'm not so great anymore. Yeah, <laughs> every hit hurts. She, and I think she got lost for a while. Um, she she wasn't sure who she wanted to be. She wasn't sure where she wanted her life to lead her. And I think she kind of just got lost. And you know, she she made wrong choices during getting lost. And that was like during high school? That was during high school. She made Because I was a bastard in high school. Oh, so was she. <laughs> but I mean, was it, was, it, was it with authority? Was it with... She... I mean, there's some people who are, who are so, so damn smart, right? Yes. That they, that they don't abide by authority because, it's, because they've gone past the just because. You know, where it's like, yeah. you got to stay in the lines. Well, why do I have to stay in between the lines? That you know was what I mean? Her. She didn't like to stay in between the lines. Because my problem test. was never authority. It was always like, but why? You know, like, I, why exactly. can't I do this? Why she, can't I do that? Mm -hmm. You know, as long as I'm not hurting anybody. And that was Sarah. She always wanted to know why. Like, why can't I? Why can't, you know, what? I'm not going to hurt anybody. What's, you know, why? why? But I, I took that road, too, even outside of, of like, you know, partying and stuff because it was like oh do I want to be a painter do I want to be this do I want to do that you know do I want to am I going to be an accountant for the rest of my life because there's all these like weird it's this weird transformative section of life where you know Jackie's still in it but <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I think I've gone through four different college majors in the past, in the past, past year. since yesterday yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's like this weird like like what does it all mean like period of everyone's life maybe it's just me no because I, I, I didn't get it I was like I had real crisis of like personality faith what is the what's the universe you know if we're all stardust do we all turn into star like it was and it's like the infinity loop continues and you know you, you get yourself down the rabbit hole <laughs> and, and then you're like you're like oh my god there's there's no meaning but then yeah. you heal then you hear people you know like Stacy's very faith based and then you know sometimes I'm like that's bullshit and she's like Nope, Jesus. <laughs> she wasn't faith-based, that's for sure. Well, I questioned it too because I followed the George Carlin line of like, you know, I was a I was, I was, I was Catholic till I reached the age of reason, and she, that's kind of like where I, because I just felt, I felt weird. Like I feel weird when I go to events. I feel weird because it's like, oh, all these people in unison are doing this thing like a flock of birds, and it's really, really weird to me. You fit in well in events. It's, it, underneath is just this extra layer of terror while it's happening. <laughs> like, at, like after we'll talk about last night, but after last night, like you know, you know, my buddy's accent from LA is like, "Hey man, you wanna go for a smoke?" And I'm like, "I'm just gonna sit here for a moment, you know, because yeah, in. just let it mm -hmm. let it marinate." But I mean, like, the, so like, what was she interested in? What were Honestly, the, like, and then what were the, what were the things that like she was defiant on? That in retrospect, she was, you know, she was probably like, "That was I don't know why I did that." She didn't know why she did a lot of things in the end, but she, she was not, she, honestly, she, there wasn't anything specific. She really was lost. She was a, looking back and thinking about her childhood, which would, childhood, which was honestly, as she would tell me years later, it was great. She had the best childhood anyone could ask for. She had love, like there was no no love it was always unconditional right um she just didn't want to follow rules and she wasn't sure who she wanted to be and um unfortunately i was divorced um do you think that played a role or, or? It, it played a huge role because her father wasn't part of her life um and the only man that was really part of her life during most of that was my father and um now he, now how old at this time sarah yeah Teenage years. I, I, well, my father always played a huge. My mom's dad was like that too. Role, yeah. like from the day Sarah was born. <clears throat> yeah, he was like my second dad. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Sarah could. 
Um, my ass will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my mother. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. Yeah, no. right. Sarah could shine. Sarah could do no wrong. Right. She could, you know, spill a whole thing of pasta all over the floor and wasn't her. <laughs> oh. Not in grandpa's eyes. So she struggled a lot with not having a male figure in her life. And I think that's why she had a hard time finding who she wanted to be. Now, why would that be? And, and I'm, I, I'm not trying to ask a stupid question. No. I'm trying to. Now, why would that be a factor in a young woman's life? Because I, as you can tell, contrary to what everyone else thinks, I'm not a young woman. You're not. What? <laughs> yeah. Really? Even, yeah. So what, if I, so what if I sit down Please. the page? None of your business. <laughs> but like, um, you know what I mean? Because I've never been in, in in those shoes. So like, what? I mean, how how important is? Because I can only speak from having a positive female role model in my life like I, I I don't know what that I don't know what some of the outcomes of that are or what some of the I mean I can only speak from from me from my father my father was oh my god I adored my father he 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 could walk on water and don't get me wrong my father was strict he was strict um my but mother fair. was probably more strict. <laughs> he was fair. Yes, he was very fair. Did she um, throw pots and pans? <laughs> no, but she always used the wooden spoon. My <laughs> mother would, Wait. My mother kept a lumber yard in business one summer. Here, the best part is she would tell me to go get Ralph because we named the wooden spoon. Well, you named the wooden oh, spoon? We named the wooden spoon, and she'd say, Marianne, go get me Ralph out of the drawer. And I would Ralph. go get it so she could give me a beating. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like picking your own switch. Yeah. My grandmother used to make me do that. I had to do that. And I, th- I think that was because it was, like, the smallest one, but it hurt the worst. <laughs> See, I just, Jackie, I mean, you didn't have to grow up like this. <laughs> no. You didn't. You didn't. No, uh-huh. but... I mean, I think I was just an angel child, but that's okay. Oh, oh we'll get to that comment. We'll get to that comment. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that, peck and paw. How your, how your parents named you. <laughs> We're still With trying to figure... one vowel. We're still trying to figure that one out. I mean, why sometimes a vowel? <laughs> stop, wow. stop talking stop. collegiately. <laughs> I don't understand those words, the elitist. You know what? I mean, not to put Jackie on the spot or anything, but maybe Jackie could answer that question more than I can, is why... I mean, because I picture... Well, Sarah- I just didn't know if Jackie wanted to be like, well, the last four years have been terrible because I don't know what up is down, down is up. I just didn't want to put you on the spot like that. But if, only because, but if Mary Ann's willing to... Only because Sarah was, you know... I mean, Sarah would have been 24, and Jackie's going to be 20, and th- this... this same time error the same like what like what like frame. okay so then what what i mean what i my sister went some some parts of it was she, like was hell and some of it was incredibly pleasant but you know the hell parts it was always it was always stuff that like i knew was i'm like oh that's that's high school shit and that's just kids being mean and you know like what are you basically what i'm trying to say is are you cool in school <laughs> <laughs> no but like you Her see stuff cool yeah, your yeah. Your dad's Adam Levine. I know. Yeah, he is. He's got the moves like Jay. Yeah, he wishes. <laughs> your dad no, is really cool. What, what, like, what, what? I, I, like, I'm 20 years out. So, what is, what's high school like? I, like, I don't even, like, what are the pressures? Like, I know there's all this crazy shit, but like, I'm sure you can elaborate on it more because I'm like, <laughs> here's the things that I assume because I'm a yeah. man. I mean, I'm the like, my parents are great. Like, my mom has her teaching degree and she like she really pushed school right from the very beginning with me so I've never rebelled in that way I've always tried to do good in school and I've always tried to have let's do well Jackie okay we'll do well (laughs) (laughs) your mother mother would be so proud of her right now (laughs) oh yeah no she'll she'll be commenting on that don't (laughs) worry (laughs) but yeah so I've always tried to do well in school and um I've just stayed out of the drama. I've always been just very kept to myself, and if it wasn't positive... Would you get shit for, for staying out of the drama? Oh, yeah. Like, you, you'd actually get drama for not participating oh, yeah. in the drama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there. I mean, I have so many stories where I have stuck to myself, and people just come with come at me with stuff for no apparent reason, and... How much, how much pressure is that? Like, I mean, do you go through those things where you're like, oh... If, if one person hates me, they all will. I, like, I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. Because I, I find that young women now have more of that F you attitude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where I they're mean, like, I don't care if you're going to say crap about me on the playground. That, I, mean, that's I definitely just don't me. care. That's, I just stick to myself. And I mean, at first, like the first few times that you deal with 
a lot of drama you're like oh my gosh like i can't take the this collapsing. Mm-hmm. yeah but then after you get used to it you're just like wow like these people really need to get a life because like it's not bothering me it's just and that's what some people i guess can't handle that and if they're constantly bombarded with stuff they they just can't handle yeah, I don't, it. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm crazy, but maybe the school environment isn't the one that, that, that says to you, it's like, definitely not. here's perspective. No, I mean, <laughs> you're seeing everybody every day, too, in school. Yeah. So it's hard when you're fighting with people and everybody's clicky because you're still stuck in the same, you know, lunchroom and, you know, all these classrooms with them. And they're just going to constantly gang up on you and make your life miserable. So Did you go through that period at all? Yeah, I did. Um, only just for a little while, but then, you know, things kind of changed i mean because then you ducked out you're just like no i just i actually look at her she's a jerk i dyed my hair blonde and got blue contacts and i my i lost like my baby weight and stuff and so guys started to like me that were upperclassmen and then everything was better (laughs) so i I was like joan rivers yourself homecoming core prom core cheerleading captain i was everything but i was also doing drugs at the same time so nobody had any idea i was the Pennsylvania State Reporter for Future Business Leaders of America in charge of 11,000 students and advisors across the state. Like, and I was doing pills all the time because that's how I got my, I had anxiety, like, and to speak in front of people. And so I'd take pills. And I remember, like, going out to Long Beach, California as a senior and speaking in front of 250,000 people, having no problem with it just because I was taking, Drugs. Was taking Vicodin. Yeah. How, now, how did you get started on that? Um, I had cysts, ovarian cysts, and my doctors were giving me prescription pain medicine. This and was then, before we we realized that oh shit, we made a mistake oh, with yeah. our with I our mean, prescriptions. I was yeah. getting like a thousand pills a month at different points, and then when I went like when I was in college, September 11th happened two weeks after I became a freshman. And I was at Elizabethtown College, which is conveniently located six miles from Three Mile Island. So we got the potassium iodide pills and got, and I couldn't get home. So I was freaking out. And then that's when everything started to really, you know, ramp up for sure because I was just scared to death. Oh, so you started taking more pills because you were scared to death. Yeah, I just wasn't sleeping. And I mean, when you can look out your dorm window and see like Three Mile Island. A secondary target. Yeah. Yeah. And and so it was just like, and that was the first time I've ever been away from home. And my parents couldn't come and get me because 81 was closed. And so that's where it all started for me, like big time. But you were taking pills in high school. I was, but I was only doing it like Friday nights after the games and Saturday nights just when I was on Instant Messenger and eating pierogies all night. (laughs) like my favorite pastime, <laughs> listening to Napster. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at your addiction. No, but that's all I did. So again, it wasn't hurting anybody. I was staying right. home, listening to music, and on instant messenger. Eating Mike and eat, eat yep. Mrs. T's. Yes, I was. I would eat a whole. Were they box. fried in butter? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and onions? Did you put onions in? Nope. <laughs> uh, sour cream? Are you even? <clears throat> nope, just butter. And, oh my and that god, was that's the saddest thing. That's <laughs> the saddest the pierogi. Oh my just god. butter. <laughs> that's the saddest oh. pierogi story. <laughs> I had a great time because I mean well, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking I was taking pills and eating, eating pierogies? pierogies on Instant Messenger, listening to Napster. It was a great time, and I wasn't hurting anybody. And other friends had come over my house, and it would just be fun to talk to boys. Because what I'm trying to do is like I've I've, I've like I've I've like you know that I like I wrap my head around this like I don't wrap my head around it because that means I get it. I try to wrap my head around it, and it just gets tighter and tighter and tighter for me to understand, like, what this is. Like, there has to, like, I'm trying to find, like, a common thread or common threads that, you know, you can say, like, you know, you can either have the foresight to see a possible problem in the future or address it at the time and have the facilities and the capabilities and the knowledge to do it. Well, actually, Stacey, you brought up a really good point. You you were afraid. There was a point in her life where she was afraid. Mm-hmm. And um, I had spoke at Wyoming Area High School last Wednesday, whatever day. I don't know. The days are starting to roll in. Yeah. And one of the gentlemen that's on the panel that I um, composed, um, he, we were talking. He's a guy in recovery. He's been recovered for 15 years. Amazing, amazing person. And... He said that if you think about um, most addicts, the reason why people gear towards drinking or they gear towards something is in fear. Mm-hmm. 
people are afraid. And in order to calm that afraidness or to get rid of that fear, they choose something else. So you chose, you were afraid. Well, it made me so hard. Chose... I mean, it's a painkiller. Right. It, you don't You chose feel. a painkiller. Sarah was, Sarah was afraid of being alone. At one point, um, right before she graduated high school, unfortunately, um, my father, her grandfather, like I said, the only man she ever truly could trust, the only man she ever truly loved, um, died suddenly. And she fear fear of being alone so she turned to drinking she turned to smoking pot eventually she turned to popping the pills because drinking and smoking pot weren't enough i mean do you Mm -hmm. think that there's it's there's like this at some point like you uh, an individual has to find like their numbing mechanism Mm -hmm. and i think it's in everyone's life Mm -hmm. you know for some people it's 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 you know Sculpture, or you know, for some people, it's you know, like for my dad, it's drag racing, like that's what he loves to do, right? Like that's his escape. You know, for me, it was, it was like, is the answer at the bottom of this glass of <laughs> whiskey? No, <laughs> all right, I guess we have to look again, you know, and that was, yeah. and that's what I did. But, but you know, the, the other interesting thing that you brought up is like, I was, I always had fear and anxiety mm-hmm. prior to 9 11, but I. It, 9-11 did scare the shit it out did. of me, like the whole world stopped that day, and it was like something you never thought you'd experience like you've read about in history books but you and never the strangest thought thing is that night the night the night of 9 11 i was I, I'm, I'm 21 mm-hmm. i was at a bar with my family was, i mean every television you know oh, yeah. and, and i didn't drink mm-hmm. like it was incredibly sobering and then the next day it was like we're all gonna die <laughs> let's drink yeah. Yeah. so fear that's a really yeah. the afraid of the the being afraid of the unknown and how did that i mean how did that in in your Relationship? How did that manifest itself? Was it like, you know, the angle? Like, wh- which kid am I getting today? Because no. you're going through it too. Yeah, like you lost wanted- your father. So after my father had died, um, I think the three of us—my mother, my myself, and Sarah—we all went into our own world. We all feared. We didn't know what was going to be next. So I mean, there's like this collateral damage amongst the strong coll- females yes. in the family. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it was. And then shortly after that, um, probably about a year after my father died, my mother got diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's. Oh, my God. And it was, you know, now fear. Okay, it's just me. I'm I'm the one in charge. I have to take care of everything. And I couldn't take care of myself. I had no idea. A lot of the times that people forget is like when, you know, like the thing that I always hated, right, when when somebody on the periphery experiences a loss, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like a casual acquaintance and they they, they take, you know, it's, oh, it's, we were, we we just talked six months ago. You know what I mean? Where you're you're just like, you're, you're trying to milk this and, and the people that you're not worried about are like the people in the, the, the nearest zone, Mm -hmm. you know, friend, Mm -hmm. like real close friends and family, like lives are destroyed i mean it's not just it's not just one thing you know if, if you lose somebody it's not just the one person man there's no. ripples that just go out and destroy shit along the way as and they go I and really then and then they get a one two in a year and i don't think people really take a step back and and think about that when you know everybody is there the first two months three months four months when someone dies and they're all you know whatever you need sometimes just those words aren't enough. Sometimes when you take and you reach out to a person, you know, three months, four months down the line, and you pick up the phone and you just say, hey, you know what? I was thinking about you. How are you doing? Mm-hmm. Those words mean more to somebody who is going through grief than you'll ever know. Because it, 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 it knows you're not forgotten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, honestly, now, you know, once my father had died and... And I was trying to deal with my mom, and I was trying to hold the family together. And in the back of my mind, um, I was that parent. I was the parent that said, not my child. And I knew Sarah was spiraling. Um, But I didn't even know how to take care of me, because my father had taken care of all of us for as long as we could remember. He took care of us. I mean, in in hindsight, is that like, is like, is it like, that was the perfect storm? It was the perfect storm. And, and do you attribute a lot of that to 
what what happened subsequently like in yes. afterwards yes as i look back now there's so many things that i would change Be- because because i know that 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 day was the perfect storm well i mean what i mean what would you what i mean what could have possibly been i could have paid attention more it was in fr- sarah's drug addiction was right in front of me so what, what were the like in hindsight looking back on it like what were the markers what, what were the things that you were like She's, that you were really at least beyond a reasonable doubt her grades started dropping she avoided me <clears throat> she argued with me she picked fights with me she would pick fights with me until I would give in so she didn't have to be home or deal with anything that was going on in the house so she was you, you knew like and I that's knew. when it started to be like what what, ch- what child am I getting today because was, yeah. were, were there days when it was like Mom. oh there's days yeah there was days when I thought oh my god no I'm I'm crazy like what like there's nothing wrong with her she no way yeah it's just, it's just chemicals yeah it was the it was the best you know it was like oh my god I have Sarah back oh my god like I'm I'm definitely you know I'm reading into it I don't you know there's no way and yeah I, there was days I never knew. There was days I didn't know where Sarah was. Like missing. She wasn't missing. I mean, I knew she was okay. I knew she was at friend's house. We just didn't know where. I didn't know where. So d- d- did you notice the the change? Like you, had no, you knew she was doing something. You just didn't know why. I knew she was doing something. I knew that, you know, at most I knew she was drinking and smoking pot. But did you think at all like I, she's, a, she's an alcoholic or... No. Never. I I drank in high school. You just thought like she's blowing off steam. I was gonna say I, I don't think, know what you're yeah. talking, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, plead never the fifth. Plead the fifth. <laughs> Whatever anyone um, says right now, ten years from now, you can say that. Not right yeah. now. We, yeah. No one knows. Keep that a secret. You were studying the Bible. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I drank in high school. Did I? Did I dabble? Yeah. Everybody did. Yeah. Uh, did I yeah. smoke pot? Sure. Everybody Absolutely. Yeah. We all have. You know. Did I try taking speed when I had to work? You know, I, I bartended when I, I was in high school. I still don't know to this day what the hell speed is. I think I it's just caffeine. Either. I don't. It's caffeine. It's like no no's. It's, <laughs> it's oh my god. Yeah, now it's like, legal who? next to the CBD edibles yeah. that they yeah. give to children it's and destroy the their thing. lives. It's the worst thing in the whole entire world. And why anyone would ever take that stuff off the shelf, I have no idea. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, so I I figured she was just like me. She was experimenting. I never in a million years. But do you look at it because I experimented and I and I and I don't yeah. have any problems right now? Then, Absolutely. by proxy, my own child will follow, She's gonna follow the same path. It. She's going to yeah. grow out of it. You know, we'll talk. We'll, you know. But there was a there was a time period when we didn't talk. We talked, but we talked at each other. We didn't talk to each other. In what she way? She was angry. She was angry. I was angry. You know, I was angry because I was left to pick up all the pieces. I was left to take With care of my help. mother. Zero help. Right. And she was angry because her grandfather left her. And we were both angry and we didn't know how to talk to each other. We talked at each other. See, I've, I've, I've realized, it's all about me, um, <laughs> that when, when, you, when you let that talking at each other go past more than like one instance Mm -hmm. it slowly turns into resentment and then hate yes Mm -hmm. and that's like a dangerous road to go down because most people don't realize like you know because usually like you know if stacy walks in here one day and she looks at me and she's like there's been days where i know she's wanted to drop an f-bomb and punch (laughs) me in the face and i have no reason i have but i'm like i don't know nope that's not me she's mad at something else i'm i'm okay with that you know, there was there was days that towards um, when I kind of figured Sarah, it, this was after high school, um, not long after high school, um, when I knew that she was using, but I wasn't sure exactly what. I punched her in the face. I sla- I punched my own daughter in the face. I, was it a verbal? It was. We were just both <clears throat> screaming, screaming. And there yeah. was another day I slapped my daughter across the face. Those are two things I, there's several other things I didn't think I'd ever have to do, but I never in a million years thought. But that's, but that's, that's all of that stuff coming into that one moment. Yeah. 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 My mom still wants to knock me out, so don't even, well. like, don't, I wouldn't, feel, well. I, I wouldn't, 
Consider like like the stuff that I did when she she would knock me out. I'm like, yeah, ma, I get it. You're supposed to do that. Um, wh- what was when did you know that like, ooh, like this is this is serious? Yeah, where 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 there's a problem. Stuff started missing from the house. I had jewelry that. Um, like quickly or like over an extended period of time? Over an or? extended period of time. Um, I had started dating my husband now and... I love you, Dave. <laughs> Secretly, he really does love you. It's not a secret. I just told everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, he had bought me jewelry that started disappearing. Um, we were remodeling the house a little bit and there was items that we bought for the remodel that was disappearing um at this point like high value items or just like random like what just random stuff like i had bought michael kors purses at the outlets and they just started disappearing and we're in the middle of a remodel of the house so we're like okay is contractor taking them is sarah taking them is sarah sarah's friends taking them like we really never pinpointed you know we didn't label anybody to say they were specifically taking them until one day when i came home from work and dave was in the shower and i went in the bedroom and her tv was gone her tv was gone now our tv from our bedroom I That's something to, you might miss. Yeah. I went into her bedroom and her TV was gone. <clears throat> okay. I went into a spare bedroom that we were storing a TV because we were remodeling and that was gone. And I went downstairs and um, in Dave's man room, she tried to, well, we didn't know specifically it was her at the time, but they had tried to take the TV from downstairs and there was no signs of a break in. There was no signs of forced entry. There was nothing kicked over. I mean, dressers were moved a little bit to try to make it seem like someone had robbed the house, but we know. We knew Wait, that it was, was her. It, it was staged? Mm-hmm. Addiction. Addiction. But so, like, all these little things, and then all of a sudden it's like... Boom. Yeah, but it's like you. there's no escaping. This is, this is something major is, that is going to happen next. And we had tried in the in the inter. In, no, we didn't. No, okay. So no, I'm sorry. Um, it's all mixed up. No, this was it. This was the big bomb. The we, TVs. The TVs. Yeah. You know, we um, we went to file charges against her. They have to file charges against your own kid. And the, I laugh and actually, because that seems like a ridiculous it, thing to have to say. It, it kind of was a, a ridiculous thing. Um, to be honest, right before that, probably a several months before that, we um, did file charges against her because she had stolen checks out of my checkbook and forged them. Was and, she still living at home? Um, off and on. Um, after she stole the checks, I threw her out again for the second time. What? So, so what... what I'm not like I, no. well, I am I I am kind of flabbergasted. But so so what makes what makes you allow her back? Like what like to, just she it's, didn't. I didn't. It's very um, simple. I, it's, just, it's your I, daughter. No, I didn't allow her back. Um, she um, she knew where we hid the key. So she just came in one night and took all the TVs. No, during the day. Well, oh, we while you guys were at work. work? Mm-hmm. Came in. We came home from work and their TVs were gone. I just, just such a crazy moment to just like hop on your bed and be like, click, and there's there's not even a remote there. It was, oh, she forgot the remotes. Um, she, wait, she, oh, yeah. all right, well, you know, yeah. there's an app for that. Yeah. Um, it was a crazy moment because um, it was a life that I never, ever in a million years thought I would be living. It was a nightmare. And all I knew was that if I didn't get her help, that she wouldn't be around. Because at that point I knew that it was out of a control that I could not, I yeah, could not deny it. Yeah, this is not for booze. No. Yeah. I couldn't deny it anymore. There was no more denying. And then, so what's what's that confrontation afterwards? My family's been through it, so I, I was, I'm just assuming that there, right after that there is a confrontation. Oh, there was a confrontation. She came home. She um, admitted to it. She took the blame. Um that she, it was her wholeheartedly her 
She would never... With four TVs on her back. Yeah. Yeah. Weighing 90 pounds. Right. I don't think so. Um, But she was really good at hiding who she wanted to hide. Um, And I think that was part of acceptance. Her being accepted by somebody. Her being, you know, in somebody else's life. Even though they're... willing to take the blame. And willing to take the blame. Yeah. Even even though... Yeah. Even though people, you know, would 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 look at these people negatively... Exactly. She was accepted. She was accepted, yeah. and that's all that mattered. Someone loved her. Supposedly loved her. They loved the addict her. They didn't love her, Sarah. Um, we confronted her, and we told her she had a choice. She either went to rehab or she went to jail. And she said, if you send me to jail, I'll die. And I said, if I don't send you to rehab, you will also die. And at least in jail, I know you're safe. Um, but we were able to get her into rehab. Um, we sent her to a 28 day program and, um, it would, failed. She was there 28 days. And later on, she explained to me that 28 days isn't even the tip of an iceberg t- for recovery. And especially um, for this. Especially for this. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so either. You spend 10 <coughs> days in blackout. <coughs> so yeah. there's now you have 18 days left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's you like know? it's like it's like 9 months of treatment on fast forward. Yeah. And yeah. then mm-hmm. after the 10 days in and blackout, you you know, you spend a week of hating everybody because you're not coming. You, that's not you. you. Your family's the worst. They sent you here. Right. You don't need help. So now you have what? Five. One week right before you, you like make a connection before yeah. you, and then you're like, see, you got to go home. Insurance is over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One more, one more, you know, five more days. And then it's like, oh, well, how do I live? How do I, how do I even survive out in the world without knowing how to feel or without taking a pill or with smoking? no friends? Because you nothing. have to get rid of those people. And that's who your whole life was before yeah. you went in there. I mean, I don't think people realize and maybe <clears throat> maybe you can attest to this too, right, is that when you're especially something as heavy as opiates, mm-hmm. I, I think the moment you start doing that, you're not you. No. Oh, it's no. you're a different person. Mm-hmm. You know, living in the vessel of someone who you care about. Yeah. And, and your personality you. is totally different. So in that 28 days, like you don't even you you you've it's gotten so bad that you forgot who you are. Yes. Yes. So you need the time and, and no pressure to find out who you are. Oh, she thought she knew who she was. In when she got it when she, in 28 days? Oh, yeah. No, you don't. No. Yeah. So, I, uh, do you know what uh, the success rate of rehab is? Do we have this conversation? No. Do, you do know I the, want okay, to know? Do you know what the success, rate of, the, uh, the success rate of people who go to rehab? Mm-mm. 3%. Do you know what the I success rate of people who don't go to rehab are? 3%. According to Penn and Teller, who checked their facts because it was on their TV show, they were talking about 12-step programs, and they're like, it's the same rate just for people who don't want to do it. It's mm-hmm. not enough time. 28 days doesn't... 28 days might have been good for, like, the casual scotch drinker who yeah. might drink a little too extra, Yeah. but 28 days doesn't accomplish shit. My, my buddy, the only way he got sober was nine months. He had to do 28 days of treatment, three months in a, a halfway house, and then six months in a group living facility yeah and i agree um so she did her 28 days and she came out and we refused to let her come home and she thought well whatever did she come out with the same attitude yeah so you knew like i left rehab the day two days before she was getting out because they have a a parent session and um we gave her an ultimatum that day and we said to her you know you either go to sober house go to a sober Sober living yeah sober living Mm -hmm. Or you, you can't come home. And she, she said, no, I got this. I'm good. Don't you worry about me. So she went to live with a friend um, who was also an addict. So I'm not sure how she figured she would stay sober um, living with an addict. Let's say you don't. Right. Um, She thought, you know, she had a, you know. And I'm sure you can attest to this. You know, addicts are master manipulation. They think oh, that yeah. oh. we're the best liars ever. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. You know, and she. I am funny and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Oh my god, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> What's you doing for the rest of your life? <laughs> oh, those lines are so special. Yeah. And, um, they only, they're only good when you're hammered. <laughs> yeah. 
Still more drinking I coffee. Said it to, I, said one, I said to one girl one night, I was hanging out with my sister. She brings this girl over. The girl, I officiated her wedding later in life, strangely enough. First time I met her, I looked at her and I said, is it hot in here or is it just you? <laughs> and she, went, and she did like the slow back off. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, and I looked and I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, she so she gets out and she's so she like, I got out. this because I and know what like, I'm doing. I got, yeah, yeah, I got this. And probably she was out maybe a week, two weeks, not even no about two weeks. And um, two very good friends who um, we still stay in contact with today um, called us, and they better terminology. They ratted her out. They said if you don't do something, she's not gonna make it. And I was like, what do you mean? And she said, she's, Sarah's really bad. Um, then did she tell you, what the, did they tell you at the time what, heroin. what she was up to? She was shooting heroin and she was asking people. But they were saying intravenous. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so after. Did you ever know, did you know that before? Yes and no. I think I knew, but I... You never I, had it confirmed? I never... Con- it was never confirmed. Until this phone call? Until this phone call. Okay. And um, so Dave and I um, called some people, called some friends. You know, what do we do? How do we how do we save her? And we... Because at that of, moment, you feel like there's a clock ticking. Well, there was a clock ticking because yeah. they told us. The clock was ticking and she didn't have a lot of time. Right. Um, and I was fortunate enough that um, I knew somebody um, who was working with a facility in um, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort Lauderdale, yeah. And um, <clears throat> she was able to get into that facility because I did try to get her into the facility. She had just left and I came up against a wall. A complete wall. I called and said, you know, listen, I... I she, she relapsed. She relapsed. She needs help. And the answer the lady gave me was, we can't talk to you. And I said, all I want is information. So she just left on X day. How do I... Is there a waiting period? Like, can I get her right back in? I said, I just need to know this information. I can't talk to you. You're not the addict. I'm like, I was so frustrated. All Are I you wanted, shitting me? All I wanted to do was scream. I said, lady, you like, listen, I just need information. And she said, I can't talk to you. You're not the addict. I need to talk to them. Like I said, sort of oh, okay. F- yeah. Bimba thing? Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, like, let me, like, let me yeah, just get the addict. Yeah. Who, what, Stand by. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Well, who doesn't want help? I just want information. Right. Mm-hmm. And they refuse to give me information. So I'd had it with up here. I was like, I'm done. Like, if this is the attitude that I'm going to get, like, I need to reach out further. So I did, like I said, I I knew somebody that was working for a facility in Florida and I called the facility and I explained what was going on and they said, okay, let's, let's get this rolling. And, um, so how, wait, how soon from the, you're not the patient to let's get this rolling was the period of time? 24 hours. Really? That was the difference in, for a facility in Florida. Now, this is a totally different facility. This was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're talking about a facility in, in Florida. In, up here that was like, I can't yeah, talk to you. Can't and talk the other, to any you. other place is like... Yeah. They're like, okay, so... Take her tomorrow. Yeah. Well, it, it was a little bit more than that. It was a little bit, you know, let's get the paperwork going. You know, let's go through all, like, her insurance, let's or, or self-pay, or, or however this is going to roll out. And in the conversation, the one thing they said to me was, okay... But now let us ask you, how are you doing? And I almost, I, I started bawling my eyes out because I thought nowhere in this whole storm has anyone asked me how I was doing. And it took my breath away. So they helped us um, form an intervention. They taught us how to do it. Um, I would say this was probably about a three-day period. I packed her bags. We picked an intervention date. Um, And in this whole time frame, every night I received a call from the rehab facility asking me how I was doing and what could they do for me. Prior to taking a check. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. There was no guarantee that Sarah was even going. Okay, so intervention. So we did the intervention, which was... 
a whirlwind in itself and I had her suitcase packed and if it wasn't for her two friends was it hard to get them to commit because they don't like to rat and then show their face oh no they didn't care they didn't okay they're good friends then they were very good friends yeah she was very fortunate um and the best I I guess one of the best parts about the intervention was that it being her two friends is she couldn't lie to them because Good. they they were recovering they're recovering addicts so yeah. she couldn't lie to them she couldn't manipulate them into her staying here <clears throat> so no matter what she said it they, didn't were, they were they were calling bullshit on all of it bullshit yep. total mm-hmm. bullshit yeah so um, finally about three o'clock that day Sarah decided that she was going to Florida and she made the phone call to and in the meantime as the intervention is going on and we're trying to find or before we're trying to find Sarah and before we started the intervention, the rehab center's calling me. Like, what can we do? Like, what do you need? Like, where, what point are you at? You yeah, know, I need a black van and a handgun. Yeah. yeah. Basically. <laughs> and um, when she decided, yes, all she had to do was pick up the phone and tell them that she's ready to come. They booked a flight. They told me where I had to get her to Newark Airwork, Airport by 6 o'clock. And she was on her way. What was that car ride like? Intense. I'm not going to lie, Sarah, we made a stop somewhere along the road. And Sarah shot up to get her to That's the manipulation again. Yeah. No, it's what she needed to get to Florida. Oh, so she didn't go goof on the plane. Right. I mean, that's how people don't realize how bad this is, like, coming down from it. Yeah, and it, it was a one-way, it was a, it, not a one-way flight, it was just a, a non-stop flight. Straight out of Newark, right to Fort Lauderdale. Straight out of Newark, right to Fort Lauderdale, someone was there to pick her up. And what, what was the name of the place where she went? Lakeview. That's the one we, is it the one we? No, that's the sober house. Okay, Lakeview gotcha. Lakeview is, okay. the, is the, the rehab facility. facility is okay. the treatment facility. Um, and they, I don't know if they do this for every patient or I don't know exactly their guidelines but the one thing is I hadn't paid them a penny yet no airline flight or nothing I hadn't even given them a credit card number still Uh still and my daughter was on her way to Florida and I did find out that um, you are allowed to when you have a medical emergency unbeknownst to me you tell the person at the ticket counter that it's a medical emergency and one person can go through the gate to make sure she gets on the flight. And you to did go that? through security. Um, her friend did. She didn't want me. Oh, Sarah hated me. Yeah. Oh, she couldn't believe I was doing this to her. I was yeah. ruining How her life. How dare you? I was ruining her life. Yeah. By doing this to her. Yeah. So Sarah made it down there. They called me to let me know she was there and that they had her and she was safe. And then... Um, they they called me periodically to check on me and to let me know that she was okay. She obviously wasn't allowed to call me, and her counselor would call me. And um, then I went down to visit Sarah. They had um, a three-day parent program, which um, I was hesitant. I wasn't sure if I really wanted to go because the last parent, last parent program I went to... It didn't turn out well. Didn't turn out too mm-hmm. good. Right. So I'll never forget when I got down to Florida... And they showed up at the facility that day. As I'm pulling in the parking lot, here comes Sarah running out, waving and smiling and just telling me that she loves me and thanking me. That was the best thing that I could have ever done for her. And you were prepared for dread. I was prepared for her. I even said to Dave, like, here we go. Like, what am I going into? Like, I, yeah. this isn't going to be. I must be a masochist. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? I mean, what was that moment? Like, that's just like, that what, moment, what did they do? <laughs> yeah. I think I actually said to one of the counselors there, I'm like, what did you do to my daughter? <laughs> In a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I did. I I, I was like, oh my God, why, why now? Why, what's the difference? And I even asked Sarah and she said, because I'm ready. I don't want to be an addict. So does she have, she had like an epiphanal moment in there. She did. And she said the difference was that they really cared about her down there, that she was a person and she was somebody. Going back to that wanted. Yeah. You know, not just like take your meds and lay in your bed. Right. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. 
So how long was she? She did. She did what? Twenty eight days. Well, and she then... did over twenty eight days. What I so found she... out. What I found out while she was down there was her counselor knew she wasn't ready um, at exactly twenty eight days, and especially because she was already in. This was her third program. She did an outpatient program previously, but um, so they pushed for her to stay. They fought with the insurance company, and she stayed probably an extra week or so. And her counselors really didn't give her much of a choice when it came to her time to leave that she really needed sober living. They convinced her that it was time that she, so she stayed and she went to Daytona Beach and she went to sober living at Avenues 12. And that's where Sarah found her true self. How long was she there for? She was there from July 4th, because I'll never forget that day, until... I'll never forget it because of America. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it because she, um, I, she made me proud that day. She got on a bus that morning and left Lakeview and she took a bus to Daytona Beach. And when she got to the bus station, um, the person that was supposed to pick her up that day wasn't there exactly on time. But she called me and said, guess what, Mom, I'm here. They're not here, but could you help me find out what I need to do? And I was like, I was panicking inside. Yeah. Dave can probably tell you I was like a mess. I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to turn to drugs again. Oh, my God, this is the worst thing that's going to happen. And I'm going on and on. But in reality, it wasn't. It's like she had taken a very, very, very small step. In the right direction. In the right direction. And um, she got settled in Avenues, and she met an amazing, amazing group of women. Um, it's only a woman's recovery house. Uh-huh. Um, they've, and I'm, I'm not sure if the facilities up here are, are doing it yet, but um, down in Florida, they realized by separating the men and the women that they're finding out, even in rehab, they're finding out that their recovery is, I, I don't want to say easier, but it goes smoother. Because women are more likely to talk to another woman. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the three of us are more likely to talk when you're not in the room. (laughs) But are you really? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's happened. (laughs) We'll talk about that later. Um, But I I think think there's a lot of people who replace uh, sex with drugs. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that might be a good idea, too. That's a part of the reason also to separate that. It's not like a boy. It's not like a... The, the Catholic boarding school. It's it's. There's clinical it's reasons why. Mm-hmm. I just there's a lot in the news lately. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know why. We'll save that for another time. For some reason, I had a dream last night about rowing crew. I don't know why. Oh my god. <laughs> so how long was she there? <laughs> July fourth. She. Um, so that person good. eventually showed up, right? Yeah, yes. they did. Oh, okay, good. Um, mm. she didn't like to follow the rules so much. Um, even though she knew that it was where she needed to be. Right. And she was doing everything right. She didn't always like the rules. So there, it's a very strict house. Um, you break the rules, you get a chance. You break the rules again, not so much. You don't get another chance. Yeah, almost like life. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and that's that's the reason why, to teach them that, you know, when you make those wrong decisions, you don't always get that second chance. So, again, I went into panic mode because I knew she needed sober living. She wanted to come home. That wasn't an option, but... Um, she wanted I, to leave the house. She didn't have a choice. They She got kicked out because oh, okay. she doesn't like the rules. Gotcha. And, um, but she went to sober living. She, she, it's not that she didn't want to be in sober living. She didn't want to be in Florida. She wanted to be home. She was starting to see how much family she was missing. So we... Um, went to sober living in Philadelphia, um, and she she completed the program in Philadelphia. She continued her sobriety, and that was that was um, and that so that was that. So from the moment the moment I hate you, mom, driving to Newark, yeah, to completing that program was that. What do you think that period of time? Over is? a year. She was she was doing that for the whole year. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So 28 days. <laughs> yeah. No such thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not really good at my maths, but that seems like one twelfth of the allotted time that should be 
set aside to help somebody yeah. get back. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just pointing right. out something. You know, I did some maths. Hey, you're you good know. at maths. I know. I'm Better good. than me. Yeah, so, so no, it, it does. It's And it's a struggle every day for her. She was a struggle every day for her. There was time she, she, she came close. She told me, though. And in that, after that 28 days, in that period from then till... Um, that tried a day, um, she explained a lot to me. She opened up. She told me stories that blew my mind, blew my mind. And I learned a lot. And it's still, we knew that there was always a chance that there, she could make a wrong decision one day. We didn't think she was going to her life. Everything was great. I mean, we were on the uphill slide. She had a job. She was working. She was paying her own bills. That was like a miracle. <laughs> um, we got her a car. We, we leased a car for her because, you know, she's in Philly. She needs better transportation. And the Uber rates went through the roof all of a sudden. So, Because <laughs> <laughs> corporations are yeah, it was kind of It was kind of better to get her a car <coughs> than have her Uber. So she was, like I said, she was doing great. Um, She was helping other people. She was helping other addicts. She was always there for them. And and then in January of 2017, she came home one weekend and she told us she was pregnant. And she was going to be a mom. And Dave and I both took a step back because we figured it's this can't happen it's too early yeah. in her recovery she can't handle this right and we talked to her and we we wanted to make sure that you know we had the heart to heart and we wanted to make sure that this is really what she wanted and she said she was ready she was ready to love somebody else besides herself and um so we stood by her and we watched her grow and we watched her become more responsible and um, she was with the father of the child, um, who we thought was a good person. Um, and that's like for another story. Um, and then on May 5th of 2017, Dave and I got married. And when we got married, we also, um, Dave also married Sarah that day. And we became a family. And it was the one thing I knew Sarah always wanted. And her and I couldn't be happier. It was the best days of our the best day of our life. And three weeks later, she spent the weekend with us. And in between there she would she would come stay with us. Was that like Memorial Day? Yeah. So Memorial Day she came to stay with us. And um we didn't think anything was wrong. Her boyfriend had had Gobbler, gallbladder surgery a week before that and he was a little sick but we figured it was from the surgery I mean, that's a pretty non like not a big deal surgery is it he was really sick he had gallstones he had a lot of them he avoided it I know I had it it was right. it can be a serious surgery uh-huh. um and he um I don't want to talk about that part so she came home that weekend and um, she had asked us to take money out of her account so she could buy baby furniture. And we did. And we gave her the check and she didn't want to leave and she wanted to stay. And we told her to stay. You know, she's like, well, what am I going to do? How's he going to get home? Well, let him take the car home. We'll get you home. Yeah. She, she said, no, I have to be responsible. I'll be Okay. And I said, okay, if you need, you know, you need anything, please call us. And she left that night about five o'clock, six o'clock that night. She texted us when she had got back to Philly. She texted us in between there to just say, you know, oh, great. He fell asleep again. I'm all alone. And I was like, well, you know, if you're not far, stop, pull over. We'll come get you. And she's like, no, mom, you you know, please. She's like, I got this. 
and um, she sent me a text message that night about seven o'clock to say she was home and that she loved me and to thank me for everything. And that was it. The next morning we woke up on Memorial Day and I don't have great cell service in Harding. And um, if I put my phone in a certain area in the house, even though we do have a landline, um, all of a sudden I started getting text message messages from a Philadelphia number and my gut just told me something was wrong. And I called and I listened to the voicemails and all the dispatcher would say was I needed to call a detective. On the, on the voicemail? Yeah. If I'm the parent of Sarah Gardner, can I please call it a Philadelphia, I forget the guy's name, a detective. I needed to reach out to him. And Dave was in the shower getting ready because we were going to start the day. This is Memorial Day? No Memorial Day. <sighs> Within the time, not even a 10 hour period. And she was sober when she left. I know that for a fact, and I will go to my grave saying that. And she's, did she drive? Was she, was she, the she one drove. Dro- she drove the way down? Yeah. She drove because he fell asleep. I mean, I, 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 I talk to, you know, you, you know what I do for a living and who I, you know, what I talk to. I mean, that's, that's, there's no bigger gut punch in the world. It was uh, you know, like, it's not a gut punch. It's a rip, rip your heart out in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The best, that night shouldn't even say that. I don't even know where that came from, but um, we had no idea. We left our house that day not knowing the honest to God truth. Down there. We left Harding on our way to Philly, not knowing if our daughter was alive or dead. Oh. I can't even imagine that. That's a long drive. That was probably the longest drive of your life. Well, we did find out. We Once we got cell service and we were able to finally get in touch with the detective, um, he proceeded to tell us that um, our daughter had died at 6 o'clock that morning, and it was probably about 10 o'clock. And he wanted to know why we didn't know. And I said, well, what do you mean? He, he was shocked. He was shocked that we had no idea that he was the one that was telling us. And I said, why? Who was supposed to tell us? And he said, her boyfriend was supposed to have called you. <clears throat> he told us that he called you. So now I'm thinking her boyfriend's dead. So we got in touch with my cousin, who was a state trooper, who ha- drove us down there, because obviously neither of us should have drove down there. Well, I mean, you would have violated 8,000 traffic laws to get there. At least. Yeah. Um, and all the way down there, I kept trying to call him because I thought he was dead also. Never knowing or fathoming what had happened. And even the detective never said how she died. We had no clue what was going on. All I knew was that we were on our way to Philadelphia to a coroner's office. To the medical examiner's office. Holy shit. And my daughter was dead. Where where did he go? He was in his in the apartment, stoned out of his mind. Because we had found out later that he was using again. Ugh. To the point that I literally, probably, let's be honest, I went after him because I looked him in the eyes and I asked him if he killed her, and he couldn't answer me. I mean, like, every every possible scenario on this spectrum you've, you've seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, e- even the, from the good to the absolute effing terrible, you've seen it. Yeah. So... I don't, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to Disney this. There's no Disneying it. Mm-hmm. Well, because it's, it's 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 just like it's like I don't like how do you how do you how do you like, how do you go on? How do you like, get up like, every you, morning? You know what you know what the next moves are, but then after that, what do you like? What do you do? Like, how do you you know? 
I, I'm still I'm still in awe of people who've experienced trauma and loss and just you know because you got two roads to take and it's the road of like self-loathing and despair and and the other road is you know let this this needs to mean something mm-hmm. well I think that's that's I went through the self despair despair I did I go through it every day but I also know that Sarah wouldn't want me to just sit in my bed and not not live life. That's what that's who she wasn't. And that's who she would never want me to be. And um so we'll fast forward to how I get through each day and um it's letting people know. It's being her voice. Well, you did so, you did something very strange. Um not, and I wouldn't say strange, but I would say out of the ordinary when all this happened. You, you showed it to me a couple of weeks ago. Do you remember in the newspaper? No. Oh, my God. Am I losing my no, mind? No, it's you wrote, you wrote the... The obituary. Yeah, because that mm-hmm. went... I didn't realize that that was you when that went viral around here. It did? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw it, yeah. Oh, I, had no, I, I honestly had no idea. Um... I had always said that I would never hide behind it. I would never be hide behind the addiction. I would never hide behind the disease. And I would never be ashamed of who Sarah was because Sarah wasn't the person who sat in someone's house and shot a heroin. Sarah wasn't the person who stole TVs. Sarah wasn't the person who I punched in the face. Sarah wasn't that person that was the addict. That wasn't Sarah. Sarah was the kind, sweet girl who would give you the shirt off her back, would probably be just as silly as you are. <laughs> Me or like... You. Okay, all right. All right, fair enough. Um, who, she lit up the room, and she just loved everybody, and uh, she especially loved her animals. Um, she just, she had such a kind heart, and... Where do you, where do you, where do you think... Where do you think that, did you have that moment where you're like, you know, of course you're going to have that moment where you're like everything, the world's a disaster and should explode. Yeah. Um, but where was the moment where you're like, maybe it shouldn't? I haven't gotten to that moment yet. Yeah, but like, but to not wallow, like, do you know what I mean? Like to not be in that, that, remember I said like the two paths? Cause, cause we, we're here today cause of something positive. We are. Yeah. Um, Because you chose the road less traveled, (laughs) as Robert Frost would say. And that's the only thing I remember from study hall. I believe that she's driving me. It's the only thing that I can say is she's the person behind this drive that I have. Because I honestly, and I say to Dave constantly, I don't know how I do it. I don't know how I get up out of bed. I don't know how... I stand in front of hundreds of kids and tell her story. I don't know how I keep going and keep spreading some type of a slight glimmer of hope out of such a tragic story. Well, there's there's people that their number one fear is public speaking. Mm-hmm. It's my biggest fear. And But it, is it? You're doing that now. You're doing it. <laughs> but I mean, so like, did you ever, did you, so like your first experience, like, do you, like, so when you go like, I don't know how I get through it. Like, do you, do you, do you look at the day going like, I don't want to, these 12 things that are in front of me today, I don't want to do any of them. And then you get to the end of the day and you're like, I made it through that. I did that. Mm-hmm. That's my day. Yeah. So it's almost like the one day at a time. It's every mm-hmm. day. Yeah. But it seems like Sarah was great 95% of her life. And it's like you can't define somebody on that last 5%, you know? And and I think that 95% is what can drive you because she was full with so much love and she did so much good. It's like you have to just keep that going because she did it and you saw her do it. So if she could do it, you could do it. She's my drive. She's I don't want to stop this moment because it was really nice. <laughs> I was over here my, I was thinking about it I was like Oh my, my face just melted Because <laughs> I went <laughs> That was so beautiful 
So why? So why? Mm-hmm. So so why now? Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we like? So let's let's talk about what we did. Okay. Right. And and just for anybody who gives a damn, it, it wasn't me. It was you guys, and it wasn't. It was all of us. It was it, it was it was a team, but trust me, you are definitely the the patent. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're the yes. Kubrick. She's the patent. <laughs> Always the um, Kubrick. <laughs> and then and then and then maybe uh, you know maybe maybe some moves we can do to 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 make it better. Because I realized through all of this, um, the storm we went through, and it was one hell of a storm. That at the end of the storm. There's got to be some type of sunshine and some type of brightness. And um, even though the topic isn't a topic of brightness or sunshine or flowers out in the field that you want to just run through, um, people need to be aware. People need to know. And um, I'm not trying to make this light at all, but there still is hope. There still is that person. You know... I stay in touch with a lot of Sarah's friends that from the recovery world, um, the ones in Florida, the ones from up here, and every day I meet somebody that's in recovery, and their stories amaze me, and they amaze me, and though even though Sarah wasn't the person who came out on the other side, um, I know that she she would want me to make that person who did come out on the other side feel like somebody special. Just like I had made her feel like somebody special. And that's what, that is that, it was that, I mean, is that like the whole reason? So just to let people know, like, we started this off going, how did we meet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and somehow we got down this really crazy road. <laughs> uh, I was in therapy for 15 years, so I learned a thing or two. <laughs> I said, I can do this better. Um... <laughs> So you, you called me up and I don't want to, like, we're not going to spoil anything about no. like what we did, but you know, we could probably spoil a little bit of it. Um, you called me up and you said, I want to do something, um, for everybody in the, in, in honor of my daughter. Yes. And I said, all right, I'm on board. And th- you gave me a strange look a couple of times. What that I just did it right now. He does I, it I just all the do time. it. That's just, just his face. Yeah, just, <laughs> I'm smelling the fart, Marianne. I'm smelling the fart. I got a cure for that. <laughs> um, and and it, remember it, it and it and it it, it 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 was supposed to be almost this visual poem right. about um, addiction and. Um, how it, it doesn't care where you come from. It doesn't care how much money you make. It doesn't care what the weather pattern is in your area. It doesn't care what God you pray to. Anybody can become part of this because yes. of, because of, but maybe, maybe it's fear and accessibility. You know, you just got to know that when you're afraid, you don't have to be afraid. Correct. And mm-hmm. a lot of people don't understand that. I mean... Yeah, every time I've been afraid, eventually it goes away. Mm-hmm. It does go away. Yeah. I mean, what? Right before we came on here, I was like, okay, Mark, let's just get this done because I'm going to probably throw up five times. <laughs> and then I lulled you into my sweet embrace. And then it was like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, every day I'm afraid. Every day I'm afraid. I don't know what the next thing's going to bring, but... Yeah, I, I, my overcoming it is, is doing this, is, is spreading this word that, you know, it, it's okay. And we're going to get through each day. And so now, our it, project, let's go back to our project. That's because what this, I'm doing. Yeah, now, how do we uh, meet, now, how do we meet, <laughs> how do we who's meet? the comedian? Jack A? Jack A. <laughs> Jack A. Yeah, how do, how we, do, we, meet, Jack, how do we meet Jack, Jack A? A? Well, so how we Remember met, we were like, oh, we're screwed. Yeah, we, uh, we came to big, big roadblock, big boulder. So this is a big. I just want to realize this is like a big poem, and it had it had a lot of working parts. Yeah. And your husband collapsing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it had a lot of moving parts in terms of like we needed somebody. Um, Honest. Y- yeah. So how we put it together, um, I have no idea. Luckily. Um, Dave and I were invited over my cousins for the 4th of July and, and her and I were talking, my cousin and I were talking 
because originally, right from the get-go, um, I wanted her daughter to be involved in this um, project as a dancer because I just her dancing just amazes me. And as I'm talking, and you know, she's like, "Well, where's the project?" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know, I'm not sure what's going on." And I said, "You know, I'm at a standstill." And she's like, "Well, I know somebody," and I was like, "You do?" So I go to this Fourth of July party, and I meet this Jacqueline. 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 <laughs> Jacqueline. <laughs> If you hear her name, you can repeat it. If you see it, you don't know what to say. <laughs> Jacqueline. Dave and I started talking to her, um, and we told her what our idea was. And it's like she literally leaped out of her chair and said, I'm in. Now, Jackie, in hindsight, just because you can doesn't mean you should. We hadn't even really. I don't even you had think, many sleepless day, nights and days. I don't even think we explained to her no. the whole concept. No. Or what the thought was or, or how we wanted this to roll out. We just said, you know, Jackie, um, you know, I, I we recently lost our daughter to addiction and we want to do this dance tribute. She's like, yes. Yes, call me in. What do, what do you need? What, what, when do we start? Yeah, what, what, do, was, what do I need? She and was I'm so like, far into it. We were like, we wanted sushi. And, <laughs> and we turn around and Jackie has like a leg of lamb on the grill. And, just, and you're like, no, we're not thinking that, Jackie. All right, well, I'll get you something else. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Um, yeah, I think the only two words I heard was like choreography and video. And I was like, yeah, sure, let's go. <laughs> yeah. So Jackie, so tell, tell me about the song. Um, tell me about how the song, what, what, why this song? Mm -hmm. Why this song? Yeah, um, I don't think I even know why it was picked. You don't know why it was picked. No. Yeah. I, well, Jackie, we left you in the dark. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I was, Not a lot yeah. of stuff. <laughs> yeah, we did. Um, we, the cameras weren't rolling. <laughs> yeah, I still don't know the, the whole thing. I was just, yeah, I'm here. I'm here for the ride. <laughs> Anything you need. Be careful who you take rides with, young lady. <laughs> Uh, My car's out back. <laughs> Got any candy? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You know what? I, this is this is a terrible topic. But when I grew up, my parents would tell me at Halloween, you know, carefully take candy from whatever, right? I was probably the kid who was like, the guy's like, I have Skittles. I'm like, all right, I'll go with you, right? <laughs> but if anybody had candy corn, I have zero issue going, go F yourself. I'm out of here. <laughs> candy corn is the one sweet you will never get me to do anything for. Back to how you got this song. <laughs> yeah. um, I just so wanted to fit in. Candy corn sucks again somehow oh, in my life this week. So just, um, I was scrolling through Facebook, as we all do, and um, one of my friends from, um, I I don't even remember who it was, but that doesn't matter. Had posted this song. <laughs> my friend. Who Thank you is to whoever yeah. posted yeah. that. My <laughs> friend who was pivotal to this story, whom I don't remember. Um, she posted this song by Daphne Willis, Somebody, Someone. And I thought, well, that's really strange. And I think I was just having a day, um, like so many other days. But those two that words I, go together very well. Somebody, Someone, mm -hmm. or a day. No, somebody's someone. Um, so that's why go, you pay attention to it. They do. Yeah. Maybe that's why it just struck me um, as really pinpointing. But so I listened to it. And as I listened to it and the words came across as she's singing and I'm like, she's talking about addiction. I was like, wow. And she's saying how, you know, you're somebody's brother, you're somebody's sister, you're somebody's mother, you're somebody's father. And I'm just, as I played it probably 10 more times, um, and I think I did it at work, so my boss was probably a little sick of the song. <laughs> You've seen pictures of the socks, man. Probably. You're dead. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I think we were at the sock phase then. Yeah. Um, the best socks ever, man. And I then I started to research Daphne, and I had found out that she wrote the song um, because her brother was um, is an addict. I, I don't know the status. I don't know the whole details of her family, the history or, or whatever. But as I you know found out of why she had wrote that song, it was because of her brother um, and addiction. And then um, as I researched the song even more, I found out that she was also a recover that she is also a recovering addict. And I thought this song can't be more perfect than it. It couldn't have. She couldn't have. Written a better song. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for picking up there. You're welcome. And, um, you just throw them out. I'll hit them back at you. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I 
let Jackie listen to the song that day, and she was like, oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it just spoke to me. You beat it. You know that, right? <laughs> well, Jackie would be like, I never heard that before. I like that song. Let's go do that one. I think it spoke to Jackie on a personal no, it, level, too. It no, did. it's a really powerful it really, song. It is. Yeah. And, like, just from my experience with dance and choreography, like, there are songs that I listen to, and I'm like, how in the world am I going to come up with something to this? And then, like, that song, it was just instant. I was like... Yep, I could do anything. You saw it, like, all right there. Yep. It was now, just pure. The the thing that we found out while doing all of this was that w- one of the things that we wanted to do is we, is we wanted to pay tribute to as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing that kind of blew me a little bit away was I didn't realize how many people that we were going to do our best to pay tribute to. Yeah, it was it was tough when I had put it out there. And that's in that's and that's in the in your life and our lives too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, besides reaching out to um, a person I had known, um, I belonged to a couple of groups on Facebook about um, mom groups um, who've lost their children to um, accidental overdoses. Um, besides that. Um, we didn't, re- you know, you take a step back and you realize it's, it's right there in front of you and your own family. Um, years before Sarah had passed away, um, my cousin had lost her son to an overdose. Um, and then um, I know that um, short two weeks after Sarah had died, um, my cousin, distant cousin, whatever, but as... All Italians know we're all cousins, no matter where we oh, are. Yeah, oh, yes. yeah, we're oh, all cousins. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why you marry the Irish, right? <laughs> <I'm> Irish. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to dirty up the you don't want to dirty up the gene pool. So that's, exactly. Yeah. Um, two weeks after Sarah had died, um, my cousin also lost her daughter to an accidental overdose, um, and then most recently, in fact, um, just May of this year, um, my other cousin lost her son. To an accidental overdose and it's just it's hitting it, it's the numbers like you know we I want to say we had a hard time choosing who we could but put in this video um, to pay tribute to but there's so many um, and so there's we, only so much video time yeah we <laughs> if we did I, I mean if you, we, if you think about it this way right if if we gave if we did this last year and we gave everyone that we lost to opioids, um, it would, and we gave everybody a second, it would be a 72,000 second video. Yeah. Right. I don't know what the math of that is on and how many right. hours that, that is. By 60 and I don't know. You're in college. You should know this stuff. <laughs> so I but mean, I mean, it but would I mean, be over. Every 60 is an hour. Yeah. So like, so it's all, so it'll be sixty it'll be like, hours. Well, no, it'll be so it'll be sixty right, plus two is twenty two for me. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, I have that's, a that's masters a lot of, in communication. A lot of the ways, I can like, talk. a lot of the ways that like that's how I like to gauge like what it is. Like you know, like mm-hmm. when you look at tragedies, you go, it, it's terrible to say it, but but you go like this is how I do it. I'm like five people. So if we give, if you, how much time should you devote to a person who you've lost in a tragedy or multiple tragedies or or whatever, you know? So. What, how much is enough time? Because I remember when 9-11 happened, going back to the mm-hmm. fear of that, I, there was I, there was a moment for me having the fear going like, how do they say everybody's name in, in, in enough amount of time? Yeah. And pay reverence and still have it be as effective as the first name that you said. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that's the, the, the horrible thing about what what this is, is that how do, you, how do you give everybody enough time? How do you give everybody enough time that you lost to this? Mm-hmm. And I don't think you can. I was just gonna say, there's I never think, enough I think, time. I think people. I think more. I think more people around the country got to do what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, we can only. We, so many people can only speak for so many voices. That's true. You know. But it was important, like you you mentioned in all of the parts of your story, how you made Sarah feel like somebody, and Sarah also made like feel other people feel like somebody special. Mm-hmm. So having somebody, someone, I think, is just like everything come together and it's just so perfect absolutely hmm. what <laughs> how many hours is it 
One thousand. Isn't that how many work hours there are in a year? One thousand two hundred hours. That's what how long it would take to pay reverence to every person that for died. one second that an, died. An entire work year. Only in 2017, though. Yeah, and the numbers are going. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the world needs to understand. Okay. T- talk about Sunday. Sunday. that's what we're talking mm-hmm. about. We want to yes. talk about the date. We want to talk about October the time. October 7th. We want to mm-hmm. talk about how everybody can meet Jack A. Jack A. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so in our whirlwind of our You're travels. You're the lead, Jackie. Yeah, Sorry Jackie. to tell you. Yeah. Um, I did all the back work. Now you get to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so. Um, so Hollywood. So, yeah, red carpet. Anyway. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, we feel like we need, we, we, the, the, we do. there we, needs to be. There needs to be. So on October 7th. Um, which is next Sunday at 2 p.m. There's a meet and greet at 3 p.m. is our video release that we did um, as as our way to pay tribute to as many um, people as we possibly can um, to let them know that they are somebody, someone. And um, it will be at Lackawanna College, which is 501 Vine Street here in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, if you, you know, if you live further than Pennsylvania, I guess to say. It'll be in the, the YouTube. We will release it on YouTube and Facebook um, once it is released um, after we release it at our viewing. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's a tribute. It's letting people know that no matter who you are, no matter what you fight no, with, no matter... Um, what you struggle with, no matter what your fear is, that you are somebody, someone, and you you mean the world to all of us. Um, whether we know you or not, you're still, you're a person that matters out in that world, and um, we hope you can join us, I think. Um, For anybody who does go to the premiere, you can't bring water in the auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> It's not my you can't rule. bring beverages or food. The Jim Cullen will lose his mind. Mind. <laughs> we um, will. Um, the meet and greet is actually geared towards um, meeting the girls, the dancers. Jackie, Jackie who is everyone, and um, all the other girls who dedicated so many hours and so much time um, to this project. Uh, we want everybody to know who they are. Um, there was no reason why we picked them, how we picked them. I know Jackie just, you know, she knew dancers and it wasn't, you know, age, race, it didn't matter. No. Um, we just, we picked dancers. And, and also there was a moment where, where we lost one or two and I, yes. I, 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 and everyone knows I don't go to church, but there was, there had to be some sort of divinity in there somewhere to make what we thought was terrible turn into something what are two? even better. It's more like eight. Well, that was for you. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Jack, you- oh, Jack yes. calls us like 10.30 Wednesday night. Oh my God. Balling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we made it work. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. It, it was a blessing in disguise. It really was. It was. Yeah, every, mm-hmm. every, every, strangely enough, like every hiccup or roadblock actually turned into like I don't know, the Super Mario coin. Like, it yeah, was... It, it was. It was. It, it was. was. I wouldn't have wanted it to go any other way. Yeah. Or yeah. the people involved. So, who are who are all the girls that danced? Oh, wow. I need, like, a list. I'm gonna, I feel like <laughs> the I'm... The soloists. Just, okay, yes. so, um, our soloists. So, there's myself. Um, then it goes into Ashlyn Moyak. And then, after Ashlyn, it is... She should know this by heart, Brenna, shouldn't she? Brenna. Brenna Johnson, yes. No, I'm, I'm testing her. Then after... Yeah. after I'm after, testing Kubrick. <laughs> <laughs> after Brenna, it goes into Kennedy Wood. Mm-hmm. After Kennedy, it goes into Allison Lanker. And after Allison, it goes into Rachel Leandry. So those are our six main dancers that are... And then, and then, and at the end, it's it's really it's a grand finale that yes, we don't want to tell anyone is, about. It's spectacular. No, it mm-hmm. is. Yep. It really is. <laughs> is there... Uh, I know it's a Sunday. And everyone has stuff to do, but is there is is there things that we can do better? There's a lot that we can do better. Um, don't turn your don't turn your head on somebody. Nobody realizes what um, is going through, what a person is going through. Um, 
so maybe just reach out and and extend a hand not literally well you can literally extend a hand if you want but always consider that beneath a person the inside of person you don't realize what truly is going in on um behind their closed door and always remember that no matter who you are and no matter what that person may look like or seem like you make a difference and you matter and I I can't stress enough um I know that when Sarah left when Sarah went to avenues avenue 12 in Daytona Beach in her sober house that is where Sarah found out that she was somebody someone and she was more than my somebody someone she made a difference do you because I gotta add a little sauce of course you do because I'm part Italian (laughs) (laughs) it is Sunday do you think that the current uh, treatment paradigm is sustainable for the pandemic that we're in the midst of right now no no people are still not talking about it people are still hiding from it um, facility centers don't see there's not enough time 20 days is not enough time to find out what is truly going on with the addict I mean we just touched on it a little bit like you know in Stacy's story and in Sarah's story we found out it was fear it was you know for Sarah it was not only it was the fear of being alone you know for Stacy it was the fear of you know Meeting dying me. dying oh. <laughs> um, I'm afraid to die so I'm gonna do drugs. Do drugs. All right, yeah. cool. And, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, the... Which is the mentality of the addict. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is. And like I said, the guy who I had met the other day that's on my panel, um, it, his was just just fear itself. You know, his was also a fear of being alone. When he was 14, his girlfriend broke up with him, and he thought that was the end of the world. You know, at the age of 14, he was afraid. And so, no, we're not we're not indulging in and finding out the real reason why addicts are using why they're turning to drugs you know a lot of them are saying you know well the the, it's the doctor's prescription sure that's only part of it to a point Mm -hmm. but i think but i think it's all part of a whole it's not just there's not one nobody forced me to take 70 a day like and that's what, that's what I was up to at my at the last point but you know when they're giving to giving them to you it, I you're supposed to take like four a day maybe so all the extra and added that I got from different doctors and prescriptions was my own doing so I mean that I it, nobody forces you to do it you're right it's the fear because then it's your emotions and everything else and I'm not dealing with them properly or talking to people but even in my college in 2003 they they had to tell me to take a medical leave because I couldn't be at school because they've never they didn't have any things in place for me abusing my own medication they had things in place for heroin and cocaine and underage drinking they didn't know what to do with me because they've never had that before and they came to apologize to me later actually the college did when I was working the Olympics and they did a story on me and they apologized to me for how they treated me and they had implemented things into place now. Here's a gift card. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> Go but, to Starbucks. But you're right. But you're right. It's, it's exactly that, what you just said. <laughs> it is. I, people aren't realizing that, you know, again, I, and I think it's the, the song stems that the addict is somebody, someone, and until you devolve, until you dive into that person and figure out what that real person is, who that real person is, we'll never know the answers of why mm-hmm. they do what they do. But telling them while they're in their addiction that you're means thinking nothing. of them. Yeah, it does. They may act like it means nothing, but when they go to bed at night, they're thinking about it. And they're just like, wow, at, like somebody actually thought about me today. And it does stick with you, even though it seems like it doesn't. Or even... Is that part of your uh, the random acts of kindness thing? Yeah, yeah. it works. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing it, works, it I was just no. saying. But even somebody who's in the midst of the worst point, like all you have to do is just say, hey, I just want you to know, like, I, I'm thinking of you. And if you need me, I'm here and they may just like scoff in your face but they're gonna think about it because it's like somebody's thinking about me why is somebody thinking about me nobody cares about me you know like that's why i'm in this you know whole situation at that point you know so reach out you're absolutely right sarah did tell me when she was sober that you know even though she truly hated me because she didn't want to get better or she thought she didn't want to get better that 
even she always knew that I loved her because I told her Mm -hmm. her and I I punched her in the face and I said but I love you yeah that probably hurt you more than It, it did but when I slapped her in the face and I threw her out I always told her that I loved her yeah, but even though you're not from West Side, that's West Side of you. <laughs> it's from Buffalo. Huh? Buffalo. Oh. Buffalo. I told you about the wings up there. Why? Didn't I tell you about the Be wings careful, up there? Be careful, I'm Uncle Jeff. Are you guys from Buffalo? The Goo Goo Dolls. The Goo Goo Dolls are from Buffalo. 90 miles? Oh, just, that's an eternity. Just say Buffalo. <laughs> just come on. I, 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 was, I went to the Buffalo place, the joint that they say was the home of the Buffalo wing. Mm-hmm. Was, Anchor I Park. wasn't Anchor impressed. Park. I don't know what the name was. Anchor Bar. I don't remember. Yeah, it is the Anchor Bar. I was mm-hmm. not, I, this was prior to me putting down the, the bottle, so I don't. <laughs> Maybe that was. I just remember I was like. <laughs> yeah, well, Wings with <laughs> Whiskey isn't good. always the best. Yeah, wings and, wings and Jack Daniels and Buffalo <laughs> Wild has, Wings. That doesn't really go that together. Doesn't really no. go um, <laughs> and and just, just so everybody knows, um, uh, there's that we're you're not gonna stop no and i don't think anybody i don't think anybody in this room is gonna stop no you know i can't have it be my my primary focus for reasons that are i think understandable to everyone because exactly. i have to i have to i have to pay my bills <laughs> no but, but i am there at every i i never thought i would get all these new friends out of this endeavor and as much as i give jackie shit we're a family now. We're, yeah, you're yeah. family mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Month and a half, we're eating turkey. <laughs> it's going to happen. Who's cooking the turkey? Huh? Dave. Dave. <laughs> you look like a deep fry guy. Would you deep fry a turkey? Uh, maybe, maybe we can do that. Maybe we can get a deep fried turkey. But yes. in all honesty, um, you, people, they really, you need to see this video. It. Mm-hmm. It truly is. Yeah. There's all, messages everywhere. All, all over. And I put my blood, sweat, and tears into it. So. <laughs> Jackie, <laughs> Jackie. Um, <laughs> if this goes anywhere, if Jackie doesn't have a six-figure job every year, doing something with dance and children, I, she was the a world natural is producer. insane. She's a natural producer. Yeah, but I don't, I don't want her in my world. <laughs> Because I'm gonna, she'll, f- she's gonna destroy me. That's right. <laughs> she would do better than you. <laughs> that's good. Jackie's the type of girl that you're like. Uh, oh, let me let me rephrase that. Jackie's the type of woman mm-hmm. that you're like. Hey, this is how I do my stuff, and she's like, mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, by the way, you're going out of business. <laughs> <laughs> that's the greatest like, form of I, I taught her tricks. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm very, I'm very proud of of this. I'm mm-hmm. very proud of you. I'm very yes. proud of Jackie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, what you pulled off is incredible, especially when you were like, oh, I'm so happy you're on board. You have two weeks. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was like, it needs to be done now, not later. Okay, what's your schedule? <laughs> yeah. Every, everybody who, who was on that stage, um, everybody who, I mean, some of the locations we shot at, like for people to allow us to do that, we were the last people to ever film in that section of the lace mill, and I drove yeah. past it the other day. That's I think it's crazy. I think it's G-O-N-E. Yeah. Yeah. It was, was terrifying. They were yeah. tearing the building down while we were yes, in it. Yes, it was the shaking. Were shaking. Yeah. Remember, and we remember had, you from Texas? Yeah. You yeah. came up. Wild man's on the on the. <laughs> yeah, wild man's on the skids here. Yeah. You can feel the feel the floor falling out a little Just bit. Just run, run that, that way. way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and everybody was scared, and I was like, "This is so cool." I know. And we're like, risking our life. Yeah, Jackie's had the time of her life, and I'm going like. My insurance company's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, so we'll, re- we'll obviously, we'll share all this stuff. Um, this is going to go out tomorrow, uh, which will be Monday, and then obviously next week. Everybody should be on the lookout for it. Um, please share it amongst your friends, your family. Um, send it to bloggers, uh, f- family groups. Um, everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Opioid awareness groups. Um, mm mm-hmm. Everything and because hashtag somebody, someone, hashtag somebody, someone, somebody's with an S, someone, mm-hmm. um, because there, there's, there's a whole lot of really awesome in this room, and it needs to get out there because we need a little bit of hope. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you think about your first podcast? When's the next one? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Stacy, we've created a monster. I love it. It needs to, it needs to be fed stereos. Um, Jackie, I'm sorry we didn't let you talk too much, but that'll come with age. Yeah. <laughs> when you get to be our age, you can talk more. 
<laughs> but you're going to talk your butt off on Sunday. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. We're going to make you do it in front of a group of people. And don't forget, Sunday at 3 o'clock is the meet and greet. 2 o'clock is the meet two and greet. O'clock. Yeah. 2 o'clock is the meet and greet. You get to meet all the all the, all the the incredibly talented uh, performers. Mm-hmm. And you get to meet everyone who's probably on this podcast. Mm-hmm. And the people that you don't see that are over there. Um, I don't know if they're all going to be there, but we'll I see. Mean, we'll fly everybody back in or whatever. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> And then it'll be a, it'll be a good night. It'll be a humbling night, but it'll be a good night. And I yeah. think mm-hmm. everyone should show up. And you know what the but the best part is? It doesn't cost you nickel. No, no. Yeah, it's free. It costs free. you nothing. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Oh my God! Can you imagine? Can you imagine going to an event where you get information and a good time? And light refreshments, and a, and isn't a, that on the poster? Yes. No, I believe it says light fair. I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just always found it pretend just when people are like light fair. I'm not that fancy. Um, no, this is finger food. And, 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 and honestly, anybody who shows up, un, unless you're an absolute weirdo creep, um, you're a family. Yes. You yes. Know, yes. We just want you to know that. Yeah, we want so you there. We want you we there. We want you there. Just please stop texting me after 3 a.m. Um, <laughs> oh, that's my fiance. <laughs> she's, she's, like, she's like, where are you? Where are you? I'm at work. Um, um, all right, great. That was it. All right. Woo-hoo. Thanks. You're done. <laughs>